Greetings, my student of ice. I'm pleased to tell you that it's time for you to learn the most powerful spell yet. The summoning of a frost giant. Oh, this is no small thing. The frost giant is immensely powerful. And to earn its respect, you must complete a mighty task and make an appropriate sacrifice. You must first go and speak to the Ice Tree Kelvin to learn about the Ice Titans before you can learn to summon one. So, you want to learn more about the Ice Titans, one of the three great races of the Spiral. Before there was such a thing as time, the Titans, Ice, Fire, and Storm, fought bitterly, each unable to get the upper hand. Bartleby, the World Tree, and Grandmother Raven sought to calm the spiral before it was destroyed. Through song, chant, and spell, they lulled the Titans into a slumber that has lasted. Though most Titans still slumber, a few are awake and active in the spiral. The Titans of Ice will aid those who show them respect. They dwell in a world of ice called Grizzleheim, linked to the spiral by a mystic bridge. The Ice Titans, also called Frost Giants, take delight in defeating trolls. You must show that you are not afraid of trolls. Only then will a Frost Giant visit Wizard City and speak with you. In Krakatopia, you must defeat Cragstone Chin, defeat a burly troll of Marleybone, and Grum Foultooth from Mushu. When you have beaten them, return to speak with Professor Greyrose, and she will tell you how to summon.
I suspect you've been up to some troll battling. While I don't condone violence for its own sake, it is a useful means of getting the Frost Giants to acknowledge your dedication to the School of Ice. The Frost Giants will surely listen to you now when you address them, but you'll still need to make them a suitable offering to summon the Rainbow Bridge. To bring it to Wizard City, you must create a tool to summon them, a Horn of Eternal Winter. I will help you with the first part, gathering the raw materials. First, you need to get some pure loam from Lady Aurea. In Unicorn Way's head, the next thing you'll need is a handful of Everfrost Ice Fragments from Colossus Boulevard. Kazul Ironhelm likely has some he can spare you. They're no use to him. Return here when you fetch those things, and I'll tell you what to do next. Greetings, young wizard. My, you've matured so much since I first met you in the early days of your arrival in Wizard City. You've come for pure loam? I can only imagine that it's for crafting a ceremonial instrument, like a horn of eternal winter. Very well. Though I have my reservations about the summoning of frost giants to this part of the spiral, I will bow to your wishes and give you what you need. Lady Oriole gives you a small bag of clay. Hmm. Everfrost ice fragments. Sure, I've got some to spare. Whenever I'm polishing Everfrost ice crystals, there are always plenty of leftover pieces. Kozl pulls out a small leather-wrapped parcel. He opens it to show you the gleaming Everfrost ice fragments. They look like diamonds. He closes the parcel and gives it to you. Be careful with them. They'll freeze right to your skin if you handle them with your bare hands. It looks like you've brought all the ingredients. Now we can begin. Creating a horn of eternal winter is delicate and difficult work. The Everfrost ice fragments must be mixed with the pure loam in a magical heat more powerful than anything in Wizard City. You must go to Dragonspire. You'll need a kiln. Use the flame kiln in Emil Flamerite's ring shop in the Athenium and Dragonspire. Only the flame at Dragonspire can melt Everfrost ice fragments into the pure loam. Here, let me show you how to make the Horn of Eternal... Professor Grey Rose instructs you in the technique of making the Horn of Eternal Winter out of pure loam and Everfrost ice fragments. When she's finished, you feel like you could do it in your sleep. When you've finished making the Horn of Eternal Winter, return here to me, and I'll lay the final enchantment upon it. As Professor Grey Rose instructed, you add the Everfrost Ice Fragments to the pure loam, shaping the Horn of Eternal Winter. Soon it shines in your hands. Despite coming from the heat, the Horn is chill to the touch. See what you've made. Oh my, it's perfect. You're quite the crafter, you know. Give me a moment now. Professor Grey Rose mutters a few syllables under her breath, and the horn of eternal winter begins to frost over. She hands it back to you. There you go now. This horn will sound throughout the spiral and is sure to get the attention of the Titans of Ice. Now that you've made yourself a Horn of Eternal Winter, and I've placed an enchantment upon it to ready it for use. It is time for you to use the horn to summon a titan of ice and demonstrate your allegiance. You should go to a cold place. The most suitable one I can think of is along Colossus Boulevard. Try Hildreth Perch near the Gobbler King's Castle. That should be enough space for an ice titan. When you get there, blow your horn and wait.
You arrive at the courtyard and take out the horn. The horn of eternal winter echoes loudly throughout the area. From the echo, you are certain your call sounded throughout the spiral. Who has dared summon the ice titan Ymir from his icy fastness in Grizzleheim? Who has blown the horn of eternal winter? Show yourself. Hmm, <laughs> I didn't see you there. My apologies. Mortal wizard, despite your tiny size, you have slain trolls aplenty and proven yourself an ally to the Ice Titans. As a sign of our allegiance, you may summon one of us to aid you in combat. Go and speak to your teacher for the spell. <laughs> I see you return unscathed, so I can only assume things went well. With their permission, you may now summon a frost giant to aid you in battle. Do be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> 